Hi, welcome everyone to our webinar today on innovation and in reducing sclerotinia and topsoil for the long term. And now I will turn it to Scott to start the presentation. Hi everyone, uh, hopefully you can hear me okay and welcome to our session today. We really appreciate you making the time to be with us. Uh, I'm Scott Gray and work on our commercial team in Canada. And uh, today we are thrilled to introduce our new innovation for reducing sclerotinia in topsoil for the long term. In case you're not familiar with us as a company, we thought uh, we wanted to start with a quick uh, introduction uh, of, of our organization. So Lullamond is a privately held Canadian company established over 100 years ago, completely focused on the research, development, and commercialization of microbial technologies. So when you think of things like yeast, bacteria, uh, fungi, and their derivatives, um, you know, that's what we specialize in and have specialized in for a very long time and, and, and certainly consider ourselves experts in that space. Um, we operate 12 different business units uh, around the world, touching many different industries, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen there. And my colleagues and I uh, in this meeting here today are all part of our plant care business unit, which uh, primarily focuses on uh, the agricultural and uh, forestry industries. This is a quick snapshot of our focus segments, priorities, and areas of investment within our plant care business. Uh, so basically unique technologies to help grow, enhance, and protect the crops. And uh, today uh, we're excited to introduce a new biofungicide technology from our LOL Stop range called LOL Stop Contans. This is going to be uh, this is an excellent innovation, which has a wide label um, covering many different broad acre and horticultural crops where sclerotinia is a concern. And uh, so we're very excited to introduce it to everyone here today. And I'll turn it over here to Dr. Megan Rains to uh, introduce the brand and, uh, and and the new technology. So uh, go ahead, Meg. Hi everyone. So as Scott said, my name is Megan Rains. I'm a field solutions manager with Lollamon Plant Care. Um, and I've been asked today to give you kind of an overview of Lollstop Contans um, and kind of provide a little bit more information about how this product works and how it can offer solutions uh, against sclerotinia. So, um, and if you're not familiar with Contans, what it is, is it's going to be a soil applied biofungicide that's actually able to reduce the amount of sclerotia within the treated soil. Um, so what it does is it actually will work to break the disease cycle, thereby leading to increased yields and improved ROIs. So an important uh, distinction here is the treated soil. So contans is going to be different than a traditional fungicide that you're really protecting your plants in that it's going to be a soil applied, applied biofungicide. Um, so it's really important to incorporate it down and, um, you know, get it in the soil where those sclerotia live. Um, so as Scott mentioned, uh, this is really relevant for a variety of both broadacre and horticultural crops. Uh, it, you know, it's usable on a wide range of these susceptible crops, among those uh, canola, uh, which sclerotinia is a large problem as well as sunflower, lettuce, carrots, celery, legumes, soybeans, uh, tomato, really just to name a few. Um, it's also registered in 27 uh, different countries um, and there are different application options available to you. So as I mentioned, it needs to be soil incorporated and actually getting it into the soil um, where the sclerotia live is going to be the most important thing for this product, um, but your options are pre-seed, at planting or post harvest. So we're going to try and change uh, the way we're thinking about this. This isn't a traditional fungicide that we're typically applying at bloom for sclerotinia control. Um, we're really working to correct the problem before the plant infection actually takes place. Um, in terms of product characteristics, um, the active ingredient in Lullstop Contans is a fungus called Cotetherium Minitans, strain Con M91-08 which is a total mouthful to say. Um, so we just kind of lovingly refer to this as contents. Um, it comes in a wettable granule formulation in a 20 kilogram or 44 pound bag with a shelf life of two years if you keep it in the fridge. Um, if you store it above four degrees, the shelf life drops off. So we're talking two to three weeks, depending on the temperature. 
um, but it is applicable uh, for conventional production and it's also EcoCert and ProCert certified. So um, I've briefly mentioned that Pontans is able to reduce the sclerotia uh, that's caused by sclerotinia species within the soil. Um, but did you know there's actually more than one species of sclerotinia? And I think it's, you know, um, not necessarily a misconception, but just kind of glossed over. Um, and a lot of products might treat one or the other, whereas Contans actually is able to target both. Um, so the fungal pathogen that is responsible for sclerotinia or fungal pathogens responsible for the sclerotia um, and sclerotinia um, have a wide host range. And because of that wide host range, we're seeing multiple different um, multiple different pathogens, multiple different plant species. There's something like 400 different plant species that this can infect. Um, and they're widespread throughout uh, Canada and the US especially, um, especially when we have dense canopies and they will cause damage to crops, the field and storage. Um, so there are a few intricacies and differences between these. Um, so I'm gonna highlight on the next slide here, Scott, kind of the difference between uh, sclerotinia sclerotium and sclerotinia minor, which are the two species um, that we're targeting with well stop contents. So sclerotinia sclerotium is more common on your broad acre type crops. Um, so there's a much wider host range with this particular pathogen, um, whereas sclerotinia minor is going to be more commonly found in those horticultural crops. So things like lettuce, celery, carrots, um, but also in soybean, uh, sunflower, peanuts, and a few other plants. Um, and then the Sclerotinia sclerotium is the um, pathogen that's actually responsible for uh, infection in things like canola. Um, but again, in sunflower, eggplant, squash, melon, cucurbits, artichokes, you know, the host range is quite large. Um, in canola, especially, this is a large problem where something as small as a 10% plant infection rate can actually cause uh, losses up to 4.6 bushels per acre um, and even exceed 25 bushels an acre for extreme um, severe stem infections. So if we look on the right hand side of this slide, you can see the difference of the sclerotia, which are the hard sort of melanated uh, bodies um, that are produced within the soil. Um, and you can see on the top here, uh, sclerotinia uh, sclerotium has a much larger, more rounded uh, appearance of the sclerotia, and they're typically larger. They're visible to the naked eye. Um, and sclerotinia minor, which is the one that we typically associate with the horticultural crops, um, are tend to be a bit smaller and more angular. So. Um, yeah, a little bit harder to see with the naked eye. In terms of contamination and infection, um, unfortunately, sclerotinia sclerotium, which is uh, the larger sclerotia on the top here, um, is a very smart fungus and can actually um, infect by both uh, ascospores and uh, mycelia, which, you know, two modes of action make this a little bit harder to control. Whereas sclerotinia minor rarely, rarely produces the ascospores, and we'll dive into that in the next slide. Um, but both of these pathogens do um, produce mycelia, um, and they can cause um, infection in the roots and the crown of the plants and the collar, sorry. Um, and you tend to see those characteristic uh, white mycelial spots um, coinciding with the root attack and those uh, sort of white mycelial clumps are what will actually condense down into the sclerotia. So as I mentioned, this fungus is, or sorry, this pathogen is smart, um, but contans is smarter. So if we start with the sclerotia at the top here, um, what we're seeing with sclerotinia uh, sclerotium is both infection caused by ascospores as well as infection caused by mycelium. Um, the most common way that this uh, pathogen is going to propagate is going to be by ascospores. But it does have a secondary infection mechanism uh, with the mycelium that is capable of, you know, attacking your roots, attacking the crown, and really helping to generate those sclerotia in the soil. Um, so that'll be on the far right here. Um, I want to focus more on the ascospores since that is um, 
more of the uh, mechanism by which the sclerotinia sclerotium will uh, spread. Um, so what will actually happen is you will get these sort of like golf tea or mushroom looking uh, structures that will actually extend out from the sclerotia. And I had someone describe this to me as like a sneeze. And that's probably a perfect way to describe these because what happens is they will actually burst and then be moved by wind and water and just, you know, uh, animals walking through your crops and they will spread to plants. Um, and once that happens, what you start to see are the symptoms developing and they tend to latch on to weaker tissues. So uh, plant uh, petioles, they'll go into wounds, um, pretty much any weak tissue they can infect, which, um, you know, is typically why we see this at bloom when there's flowers. Um, and then you'll see the symptoms kind of progress inward, causing the plant to die. Uh, and then you have contaminated residues to worry about. And once you have contaminated residues, what will actually happen is sclerotia will just go back into your soil. So um, contans, our lyle stop contans, will actually work uh, to consume the sclerotia. Um, so Scott, if you just want to hit next, I think there's an animation. Yeah. Oh, went back. Yeah. So you can actually see here that contans will target the sclerotia that exists in your soil, um, as well as stopping that infection that's caused by the mycelium. And then if it's applied post-harvest, you could work to control those contaminated residues and stop the cycle of those sclerotia going back into your soil. If we look at some really lovely photos here, um, what we're seeing is the spores of Cototherium minicans actually germinating to form mycelia that can consume the sclerotia through a mechanism known as eradication. Contans will actually um, use digestive enzymes to drill in small pores that'll penetrate the inner and outer layers of the sclerotia. So sclerotia, as those uh, mycelia sort of condense and myelinate, become very difficult uh, for traditional fungicides to penetrate because they're UV resistant, they exist in the soil, not on the plants. Um, it's just a hard thing for a traditional fungicide to control. Um, what you'll see with contans though is the ability for those digestive enzymes to actually kind of get through that myelinated layer and penetrate inside the actual sclerotia. So in doing so, uh, what you see in these photos is the colonization, the generation of the pores, um, that fully colonization, and then a partially consumed sclerotia on the uh, bottom right here. So this does take some time. It's not an overnight uh, process. And we typically see destruction occurring within six to 12 weeks. Um, and at that point, the infected uh, sclerotia can no longer generate those apoxia um, Apoxia, which are those mushroom-like structures that actually will put out those ascospores and cause the propagation of the disease. Um, so if we look at uh, some sclerotia here, you can see on the left an untreated soil where you have that nice, healthy um, bundle of mycelia with the myelinated outer layer, um, so not penetrated. And then soil treated with well stop contans, where you can actually see that the fungus contained in well stop contans has killed uh, the sclerotia from the inside out. Um, so we can visualize this on uh, petri dishes with a color changing agar. So on the left, in that untreated soil, we see no color change. And then on the right, we actually, you see a color change from blue to clear. Um, so on the right with contans uh, application, you see that the sclerotinia is not able to grow and therefore we see no change in the agar. So we actually have a really nice video that shows this for you on the next slide here. Once again, we have our blue agar. So one sclerotia, one treated, one not.
And there's that color change of this Blaritinia growing out of the untreated sclerotia. So that's really it in terms of uh, the biology and sort of the life cycle of uh, sclerotinia and how it can be controlled by contents. So I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, uh, Russell, so he can talk about uh, application and kind of the more practical aspects of this product. Yeah, thanks, Meg. Hi, everyone. I'm Russell Mello. Um, I am the technical sales representative here in uh, southern Alberta. So yeah, I'll just talk a, a couple of minutes here on the strategy and application of Lalstop Contents. So when you use Lalstop Contents, what we're really looking to do is uh, we're able to reduce the, the sclerotia levels in infested soils with each crop cycle. Uh, this helps to eliminate up to 80 to 90 percent of sclerotia in the treated soil layers. Now, uh, we know that uh, sclerotia can survive in the soil for up to 10 years. And so in situations where you've got heavy infestation or if you're on a regular or uh, uh, a tight um, rotation of susceptible crops, it can be really beneficial um, to have multiple uh, to, to apply it multiple years within your, your crop rotation and just to consistently be uh, reducing that sclerotia over time in the throughout the different layers of soil. So what we want to be doing is um, e either applying it uh, uh, before planting or after harvest. And you can also use it in conjunction with any biological or chemical fungicides that you would normally be using through the growing season, uh, just to give that uh, that crop uh, maximum protection um, uh, on the susceptible crops. So it's really easy to use. You just apply it with your uh, conventional sprayer, um, again, either uh, before planting or, or after harvest. So when you use it as a, a pre-seed application, um, what you'll be doing is you'll spray low stop contents onto the surface of the soil, and then you'll want to incorporate it either through uh, conventional tillage or for no-till operations, just um, the action of, of uh, dragging your, your drills across the field is enough to get it below any, any stubble that might be laying on top of the, on top of the field um, or through any emerging weeds and get it onto that upper layer of, uh, of, of the soil surface. So for, po for post-harvest application, um, uh, what you're uh, wanting to be doing is just um, spraying that uh, livestock contents onto the crop residue um, after you've harvested a crop that you know was infected with uh, sclerotinia. And that'll just help to eliminate um, any living um, uh, or a lot of that, uh, that sclerotia that is still living on that uh, crop residue to try and stop that cycle. So just a recap here, um, when you use lost stop contents, um, you can help to reduce up to 85% of the sclerotia in the treated soil, uh, just to help to break that disease cycle, which is really what we're looking to do with this. Um, and as a result, uh, it'll help you increase your yield um, and improve your return on investment. Um, it is registered, to, like like Meg already said, it's registered on a on a wide variety of crops, uh, susceptible crops, uh, canola legumes, soybeans, sunflower, lettuce, carrots, celery, dry beans. Um, so so quite a few uh, uh, others as well. Um, three different application options: pre-seed, at planting, and post harvest. So. If you have any other questions after the webinar that don't get answered, or if you just like to, to learn more about it, uh, feel free to, to reach out to myself or any, uh, any of the other representatives across Canada here, and we'd be more than happy to sit down and, and chat with you more about it. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.